بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما So the next thing we'll try to understand here a little bit more details about the autonomous access point architecture like in the previous i have given an overview bit the difference between these two so if you're using autonomous system access uh, sorry autonomous access point mode so basically there is no wlc used but if you're going with lightweight access point mode will be having a centralized wlc the controllers used to manage the access points so the first thing we'll try to get into more uh, details about how the autonomous access point architecture is going to work now the main basic point is we don't have wlc so all the access points they do provide the connectivity to the wireless users they do the same job at the same time they will also have full functionality it means all the management related options or any kind of real kind of real time traffic everything is managed by the access point and where you need to manage each and every access point separately so whether you need to configure the societies or whether you you need to configure any any kind of radio frequency channels so all the settings or security settings like passwords so everything you have to manage or you have to do it individually on each and every access point so again as i said technically this is not a scalable in a bigger scenarios so again you with the help of access point you can just create one basic service set and of course you can create multiple uh, basic service set which is going to form extended service set when we are using multiple access points now again this is uh, more suitable for your small office home office implementations so where you have one or two access points and you want to cover a small area or maybe even few more access points if you want but technically when you have hundreds of access points or 10 to 15 access points also it's not an easy job to manage each and every access point individually so that's that's really not uh, applicable in a enterprise typical enterprise networks because a typical enterprise network may may have something around hundreds to thousands of access points now the next thing we need to understand that most of the wireless networks Uh, wireless networks are actually extension to your wide network so when you're trying to set up any specific network so basically we do use a wireless so let's say this is my wireless network now this will be acting as extension to your wide network so which means you still have a backbone network which is a wide backbone and you want the users who are connecting to the wireless should get some kind of uh, mobility and also um, mobility that way they can connect to connect to the network through some wireless uh, wireless networks so wireless infrastructure so which means you you need to make sure that these wireless users should also be able to access the resources which are present on the wide network and again on the wide network you do have multiple vlans like take an example in your company we do have multiple departments let's say vlan 10 Uh, let's say some some department let's say accounts and you have a vlan 20 maybe this is a marketing department and you got a vlan 30 which is let's say sales department now we do have this department so technically what we will be doing is on the wide network we'll be creating the vlan right so again based on the vlan you assign the ports so logically it is going to separate each and every individual Uh, each and every individual departments and logically it separates and there will be some trunk links you know the concept of the wide so i don't want to get into that but now the question is we do have a wireless users like i do have a wireless users with accounts department and also we do have a marketing department and the sales department and these users are also belongs to the same department but they are not connecting to the wide infrastructure they are connecting through wireless so what we'll be doing is we'll be configuring something called ssids so each vlan or each separate department will be configured with a separate ssid and ssid names you can give vlan 10 or you can simply say accounts marketing sales or you can say 10 20 30 just to identify the vlans now now what we'll be doing is we'll be doing this at the access layer so this is where the access points or configured with the respect to ssids 
and the user who are trying to connect to this SSID, they will be uh, logically part of a separate logical network. So every user connecting to one common SSID is like one logical separate subnet. And then what we'll be doing is we'll be mapping these specific things like the marketing is mapped with the marketing here SSID and the sales is mapped with sales here. So this is typically done on the access point at the access layer. And again, the links which are connecting between the switches as well as between the access point, they are configured as a trunk link. So this is to ensure that the user of the VLAN 10 uh, traffic, when it is moving to the access point, so it should go on the trunk link, you know, the trunk link or job. So trunk link is the link which is going to carry multiple VLAN traffic. So in terms of wireless architecture, so these VLANs will be identified with the individual SSIDs. And these individual SSIDs are mapped to a specific VLANs to ensure that any, any user who is connecting to this SSID is uh, can still able to access to the resources of the same department, even though he's going over the wide infrastructure. So again, as I said, the trunk links, the trunk links uh, need to be configured. Uh, the trunk link need to be configured connecting between the access point to the switch. Of course, between the switch to switch also, you will be having an access point which is going to extend your uh, network architecture further to provide the connectivity between the same VLAN users as well as between different VLANs if you want. Now, when it comes to managing the access point, well, the access points are managed individually as I said in the autonomous architecture. So every access point will be having something called management IP address. Like here, you can see the IP address of this access point. Let's say this is 192.168.10.10. So we go to the browser and then we type in 192.168.10.10. So assuming that you do have a connectivity to the access point. So this is more uh, something like, uh, it looks like this. So you will log into the access point GUI. And from this GUI, you are going to configure multiple things like you will configure something like SSIDs, or even you, you actually map the VLAN as well. And also you, you're going to define what will be the radio frequency parameters. And also if you are applying security, then probably what is the pre-shared key or the password you will be using for authenticating the users. Or even you, you also need to configure the transmitting power to be used depending upon the location. So there are plenty of parameters you need to configure. So this has to be done individually for each and every access point here because in the autonomous architecture, each and every access point is managed individually. So you need to log into each and every, each and every access point and you have to configure all the parameters, whatever I discussed just now, uh, all should be configured uh, separately. So all the access points must be configured and managed individually. You need to log in, that is one option. Or if you're using some kind of management tools, like there is something called Cisco DNA Center now, Cisco Prime Infrastructure is, is being replaced with DNA now. So if you are using any of these infrastructure uh, options, like management platforms from Cisco, then what you can do is with the help of these platforms, you can manage all these access points from single centralized place. Of course, if you're not using this uh, centralized management platforms, then basically you have to go to each and every individual access point to manage them. Now, one more thing we need to know, we will be using a separate management VLAN. So if you remember the VLAN basics topic, uh, basics in the CCNA probably. So in the VLAN basics, we'll be using something called management VLAN, which is going to separate the management traffic with the normal user traffic. So we'll be using a separate VLAN uh, again for management. And let's say from here, I want to access the access point. I can still access the access point, the GUI from any of the place. And of course the links uh, connecting between the switches will be configured as a trunks to allow the management VLAN also to pass through the trunk links, just like any other VLAN. But the difference is we will be using this management VLAN only for management related traffic. So these are the few parameters you need to know when it comes to autonomous uh, access point. So again, as I said, one of the major limitation with autonomous system, uh, sorry, autonomous access point is now this autonomous access point architecture, all the access points are managed individually. 
that's a that's a main limitation so again as i said practically this is not scalable so i'll be discussing a little bit more limitations about the this model uh, probably in our next next section or the next video